Welcome back to another Brock's Performance Tech Talk. Well, we were in the middle of working on a bike for our Loan Us Your Bike project. This is a local motorcycle. Believe it or not, <laughs> all of this mess is absolutely, it's a beautiful 2015 GSXR 1000. Um, but it, as we were trying to tune it, uh, we ran into a couple issues. Uh, the owner said it had a check engine light. Well, that, that's sort of common when you put a pipe on. Um, but he also said, Brock, he said, this bike looks totally badass. He said, but it's slow. It just doesn't run right. I've got a friend with a 600 that if we run long enough, he'll catch me and pass me. So and we all know that's not supposed to happen with a bike like this. Um, so what we're going to do, instead of all of the excruciating detail, you can go look up in our Jixilla series, base runs, analog inputs, all kinds of craziness. We're just going to very simply show you what we're, what we're doing to this bike. And it doesn't matter. It could be a 600. It could be a 750. It could be a road race bike. It could, you know, be two feet longer. It doesn't matter. All the engines are the same. They don't know what they're doing. And all we're going to do is find out where we are so we can figure out where we need to be. So I'm gonna walk over to the dyno screen here and show you where we started with this bike that got it in this big mess that it's in right now. If you've watched any of our other series, especially the Jigzilla GSXR 1000 series, you'll know we're all about our base runs. We don't know where we're going until we know where we are. We rolled this bike up on the dyno, looking cool, sounding cool, made a run, SAE scale, we got 161 horsepower and 75 foot-pounds of torque. Now remember, this is a 2015. Suzuki didn't really elevate their game until 2017, but even for a, an older bike with an older technology, the owner's right. Uh, 161 horsepower is just not very fast. And that's just how it rolled up. Whatever gas was in it, whatever oil, we don't know, we don't care. You know how we do it. So then what we did, he said it was slow. Okay, well generally we do a fifth gear pull. Uh, we went ahead and pulled it in sixth gear. And if we look, the bike went 162 miles an hour. Now that's 162 miles an hour rear wheel speed in sixth gear. This is sort of old style technology. Um, the tack said he was going 14, 14.2, 14, 14,200 RPM. The dyno says he's going 13,100. They were very optimistic back in the day. As far as speed, it's exactly what he said. Brock, I'll get up to 176. He said, my buddy on a 600, meow, he just flies past me. Well, in reality, that 176 on the Speedo was only 162 miles an hour. So then we started looking at the bike, okay. Um, what are these check engine lights about? What all is going on? Also, in order for us to tune it, we have to hook up our sensors. So we pulled the air box off. Well, when we pulled off the air box, we found this. All right, this bike's ridden on the street a lot. That's, who knows, this filter may have been in there for the whole 15,000 miles. It may have only been in there five, could have been in there 10, but this isn't helping the bike go faster we're going to put a Sprint filter in it. Um, so in order to see what's happening, we had to remove the air box. And uh, we went ahead and made a base pull with the air box removed. Now remember, we now you're not breathing through the air box. It's going to give you uh, some increased readings uh, as far as power goes because it can get more air. Well, when we pulled off the air box, look at that. 127 to 138, that's a huge gain at, um, you know, through the middle there, but we got, a, we got a great big gain. Well, that tells us there's something going on. Why isn't this bike, is it just the filter or is there something else going on? Well, um, it had a dash C28 code, which means secondary throttle valves. So what we, what we noticed was his secondary throttle valves weren't operating correctly. I made an adjustment to the throttle valve to get rid of the code. Now remember, still no air box, still no, no velocity stacks, no air cleaner, nothing. 
just removing the code, bam, look at that gain. It's huge, from 163 with no air box up to 169. Some of the gains up here, that's six, seven horsepower. Okay, now we're getting there. So we know we had a problem with the secondary throttles. We know that there's something going on with the filter. Um, what else do we need to do before we can actually tune this motorcycle? Well, that's when we looked at the air-fuel ratio. Now, we checked it. Of course, it has our exhaust. It has a power commander. We checked the map. It has the map from our map system. Up here, everything's fine when the secondary um, injectors come in. But down here, wow. 11.4 to 1. I can assure you we don't send maps out that are 11.4 to 1. So if you look at any of our WINS power charging videos, what we're going to do, we're going to clean this the same way, same way we always do. We suck the fuel out of his tank. There's his old fuel. We're going to put two gallons of fuel in this, dump this entire can in, and then put it in his empty tank and go for a ride. Before we get started, uh, I want to go back and mention something. Um, I mentioned the codes, the C28 code. Well, how do we know that the bike is reading codes? Today's bikes have diagnostic connectors. Now, you can go buy a fancy connector, switch, and wire to hook into here, or you can use a paper clip or a piece of wire. I don't know how much their tool costs. I've never bought one. But I can tell you, you go across here, you make the connection, you look up here on the dash. Our codes are now C00. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the uh, fancy tool. There's our miles. This bike does not, it's not showing any codes right now, so it's ready for us to go and do our fuel cleanse. Okay, so what fuel are we using to, you, to put with our power charge? Don't know. It's what was in his bike. Could be anything. So we drained all the fuel out of his bike. We put two gallons in here. I'm going to go ahead and dump the entire can inside. So this is a much higher concentration than they recommend but we've had really, really good luck with this in the past. Now, I'm gonna put this fuel in the bike. It's completely empty. If I try to start it, it won't run. I'll put this fuel in, and I'm gonna go for about a 10 mile ride just to, uh, just to cleanse the fuel system, uh, try to clean up the back side of those valves, try to clean up the top of the pistons, and we'll see if it works that quickly. And then, if it does, we'll make another pull to see if we picked up any additional power. You might be asking yourself, why do you use the WINS power charge instead of something from a local auto parts store? The auto parts store stuff may eventually work. We use the WINS because it works very quickly. Who's got time to wait for all that rest of that stuff? If you want to use some other cleaner for maintenance, that's great. This bike's got, as you saw on the, uh, on the dash there, about 15,000 miles. My guess is it's never had the, uh, the system cleaned, so we're just going to go ahead and make sure everything's perfect because there's no reason for us to create maps with a bike that has problems. So we're just going to get rid of them in advance. Be proactive.
we're back. Uh, that took, I don't know, a half hour or so. I went on a, about a 17 mile ride just to get the power charge through the, uh, through the engine. Um, if you look at the dyno chart here, we're getting some really, really good gains. Now, this is torque. So we're looking at, you know, about four foot pounds of torque. Horsepower wise, there's a gap all the way up. And then the peak, we went from 169 to 172. Now, our air fuel didn't change that much. But one of the things you have to remember is that air fuel is taking an average from all of the cylinders. So we could have one cylinder that was off or clogged more than the other, uh, and we could see a pretty nice increase in power and torque, but not necessarily see a very big change in, in uh, uh, air fuel ratio. So we're gonna go throw our little scope down the inside, make sure everything's cleaned up okay, and then um, we'll start tuning and flashing. We'll see you here in a minute. Okay, we just checked the inlet again with the endoscope, and it's definitely cleaner, but not as clean as we like to see them before we make our mapping. Um, my guess is the 15,000 miles versus what we typically see, whether that's 3,000, 5,000, 8,000, 15,000 is just to, uh, it just has more carbon buildup. So we're gonna have to go for a little bit uh, longer ride and we'll check it again. And once the back of the valves look like they're supposed to, we'll start our tuning process. We put some miles on the bike with the winds power charge cleaner. Um, now we've got to put the air box back in and uh, we're going to put in the sprint filter and that'll be our base run before I start tuning using the ECU. Because we're going to be tuning through the ECU and adjusting the operation of the secondary throttle plates, we're going to monitor it similar to what we did on Jixzilla so we can see where we're at. Then when we make our changes, this will allow us to confirm it. One thing I wanted to point out, we get the question all the time, you know, Brock, I got this filter or that filter. I see dust in my air box. Is that normal? Well, this bike has never had anything except an OEM paper filter. And if you look in here, you can see dust, debris. Um, there's also a little bit of oil mist, which is normal coming from the crankcase breather. But you can see there's there's plenty of stuff in here. I'm, I'm actually going to pull this air box apart and uh, clean it out real quick because I don't like the amount of debris that's in there. Um, no air filter that allows air to come into your engine can stop every speck of dust. It could. Wrap it in saran wrap. Don't let any air through. You're not going to get any dust, but your bike's not going to run. So um, even the best, the Suzuki, their filters are fantastic. Um, even the best OEM filter has to let a little something through and the more flow you get you know the more chances you're going to have of getting this dust it's completely normal nothing to worry about the engine ingests it blows through no problem now if you're getting big grains of sand or big grains of dust over 100 micron well then it's something that you'd want to worry about but before but under that this is nothing I'm not sure if you can see but that's the top edge of the piston Nice and shiny. And then the valves, the debris that was on the back side of them, it's 95% gone. Um, and we've seen an increase in horsepower, so we'll get the job done. Before we button this back up, we have the airbox in, the Sprint filter. I wanted to sort of show you something here. Um, we did something really cool with the flash on this bike. And watch the throttle blades. If you've looked at any of our other videos, you know the throttle blades in your way is something you don't want. Watch what happens on this bike as soon as we put it into gear and change gears. Um, we got a really cool uh, trick going on with the flash. And then also watch the spray pattern of the top nozzles on the back of these uh, plates. You can remove the plates, but then you're not getting the same spray pattern as stock, and um, we've actually lost horsepower removing them. So now we, we can just control them how we want.
in an attempt to make this video more streamlined, uh, we want to keep it under around 20 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and sort of skip to the end because if you pay attention to our series, you know what we did. We added Alice in Less Than Zero. We added Petron. We obviously uh, went for the went for the ride using the uh, with the power charge in there, um, and then we mapped it using Tuning Link um, for the PC5 on Pump Gas and on MR12, and then we also made a map just in the ECU um, with our throttle stop. That took a day. Always takes a day. <laughs> anyway. Um, let me show you where we left off versus what we ended up doing. Um, when the bike came in, it made 161. Now we're at 172, but look at the power gate up here. Um, and all we've done, we fixed one code. We went for a ride with the power charge to try to get the, uh, you know, the, the backs of the valves, the, the fuel system, the pistons, everything all cleaned up. So this was with no air box, no velocity stacks, anything, because we were just testing. Well, once we put the stat or the air box back together, now look, ha ha, big old gains everywhere. Bike went from 161 horsepower to 176. Now that's getting uh, that's getting more like it. We're still on the SAE scale. So, what else can we do? Well, you guys know we like MR12 with the MR12. Wow. 182 horsepower. No more 600s are going to come <laughs> out running this bike. Now granted, if the owner wants it to go faster, we're going to have to change the gearing. But as far as performance, when you look at the 182 on the SAE scale, um, man, that's, that's, that's not that far off from, these, from, the, from the new modern bikes. That's about 10 horsepower down, but um, you can pick these up very economically these days. And uh, you know, do do some work. This is an eight second, eight second stock motor bike right here. Absolutely no question. Um, so anyway, what about my bike? Well, that's what he wanted to know. And everything we do, it all revolves around just making sure that we get the bike in per in in as good an order as we can to tune it, tuning it, and see what kind of results we can come up with. And um, I'm sure the customer. Uh, that owns this motorcycle is going to be very happy when he takes it for his first ride. So, till next time, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance Tech Talk. We'll see you then. smooth she's geared to the moon 60 miles an hour we're 4500 on the uh, speedo super smooth got quite a bit of clutch in it now take a little bit of getting used to we're just going to turn around here make sure the shift light works like it should probably not much traction down low Oh yeah, she's running good. Bike needs an air shifter though. Accelerates too quickly. So what happens if I'm, a, right now, I'm in position number one, which is pump gas. If we change it over to position number two, what happens? We've got pump gas in the bike. Basically nothing. There's only a slight difference in mapping and it's not enough to be dramatic, but it will hurt your fuel mileage and the bike will start to gargle. So it's best, you can hear it there, whop, whop, whop. It's best to run the pump gas map with pump gas. And if you're going to put some MR12 in, Savage Mode is on position number two.
everybody wants to run 93 because it makes them feel good. Yeah. So you can if you want, but it runs it's about two horsepower less than 89. Are you kidding me? Jesus. It's not the same, right? Hell no. Well, yeah. That is the... Oh, man. It'll pull you back every time. And the throttle was stupid. Yeah, you got that uh, that soft spot. We, we pulled all that stuff out. With this thing has no hesitation. It is gone. God, man. I could... Holy crap.